Woo! What's going on, everybody? Everyone hates Tesla. Ain't nothing new. Now let's go into stories of Elon. So the next one, we're going to be talking about production quality and then batteries. So this is very interesting because <clears throat> it shows the vertical integration is real. Like a lot of people don't know about vertical integration and what that even means. And vertical integration is basically when a company takes a product from, let's say, raw materials. And then if it's vertically integrated, it's a part of, let's say, mining it, refining it, then shipping it. Then once they ship it, they get it to like, let's say, an assembly factory and they assemble it or manufacture it or fabricate it. Then they make the final product after that process and then they sell it. They're the retailers. So basically they make margins, but they control the whole supply chain, right? Every phase to get the final product. So basically if it's like, let's say some crops from the field to the table, if a company owns each process and each step to get that crop from the field, from the soil to the table of the people that's eating it, then that allows them to control a lot of different price points and innovate the process and make it more effective and efficient if they push it. So this is something that Tesla has done. Yes. Oh my gosh. Surprise. And guess who made it happen? Elon. <laughs> well, let's, let's go ahead and read from the book. And when the first Model S cars rolled off the Fremont assembly line in June, 2012, hundreds of people, including California governor, Jerry Brown, showed up for a celebration. Many of the workers waved the American flags and some cried. And what had once been a bankrupt factory had laid off all of its workers, now had 2,000 employees and was leading the way to the electric vehicle future. Everybody's happy, right, guys? All right. Everybody's happy. But uh, <laughs> Elon is not about to be happy. Nope. All right, cool. But... A few days later, when Musk was delivered his own Model S from the production line, he was not happy. More precisely, he declared that it sucked. What? It sucked. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Yeah, it sucked, the guys. He asked Vaughn, and Vaughn is the engineer and the designer, to come to his house, and they spent two hours going over the vehicle. Jesus Christ, is this the best that we can do? Musk asked. The panel gap finishes crap and the paint quality is crap why aren't we getting the same production quality as mercedes-benz or bmw so elon was like what why aren't we like beamer we need to get it right and so when musk gets angry he's quick to pull the trigger he fired three production quality chiefs in the quickness damn Three people got laid off with the quickness, man. Come on, man. <laughs> One day that Vaughn was with him on his plane and asked, how could he help? And he should have been careful about making such an offer, especially Elon Musk. Musk asked him to move to Fremont for a year to be the new production quality chief. Vaughn and his deputy, Dave Morris, who accompanied him to Fremont, would sometimes walk the factory's assembly line until two o'clock in the morning and it was an interesting experience for a designer i thought me it taught me excuse me it taught me how all the things you create on the drawing board have an effect at the other end on the assembly line vaughn says and it must join them two or three nights a week his focus was on the root causes and what in the design was to blame for the production line problem and one of the most favorite words in concepts was hardcore. He used it to describe the workplace culture he wanted and he found it at Zip2. And he would use it almost 30 years later when he got Twitter. As the Model S production line ramped up, he spelled out his creed in an email to employees titled Ultra Hardcore. It read, please prepare yourself for a level of intensity that is greater than anything most of you have ever experienced before. Revolutionizing industries is not for the faint of heart. Come on, man. Elon Musk is out here getting people ready. Like, come on. The validation came at the end of 2012. A Motor Trend magazine picked it 
as car of the year the headline tesla model s shocking winner proof positive that america can still make great things wow that's interesting the review itself was so breathtaking that it surprised even musk it drives like a sports car agile and instantly responsive but it also is smoothly and effortlessly as a rolls royce can carry as almost as a chevy and is more efficient than a toyota prius oh and if it's up to valet you could pull up to a hotel like a supermodel walking on the paris catwalk the article ended by mentioning the astonished inflection point the model s presents it was the first time that an award had gone to an electric vehicle wow shout outs to the model s all right cool maybe he was capping though maybe that guy was lying maybe that guy got paid off right <laughs> But here's the interesting part, right? We're going to go to the next part that I find very interesting, all right? So pay attention. All right. So the Nevada Battery Gigafactory. So this is where we're moving into creating a battery factory, right? So we got a car manufacturing plant going on with the Fremont, right? So we're making cars and we're producing Model S's. And this is great. This is great for America. This is something different. Now moving into the Nevada Battery Gigafactory, now we're gonna create batteries? What, are you serious? Hold on, how, Sway? How are we gonna do that? <laughs> I'm creating batteries? The idea that Musk proposed in 2013 was ostentatious. Build a Gigafactory battery in the US with an output greater than all other battery factories in the world combined. Quote, it was a completely wacky idea, says the JB, the battery whiz who was one of Tesla's co-founders. It seems like a science fiction crazy. To Musk, it was a matter of first principles. The Model S was using about 10% of the world's batteries. The new models that Tesla had on the drawing board, an SUV called the Model X and a mass market sedan that would become the Model 3 would require 10 times the number of batteries. Quote, what began as a showstopper problem, JB says, became a really fun, blue sky, wacky brainstorming opportunity to say, wow, this is actually a chance to do something unique. There was one problem, though, JB recalls. We had no clue on how to build a factory. <laughs> that could help. That, that, that could be a big problem, right? The like, I don't know how to build a factory. How are we going to make this? This is very interesting. Now. This is why it makes Elon Musk and especially the things that Tesla has done crazy. So Musk and JB decided to pursue a partnership with the battery supplier, Panasonic. And together they would build a factory where Panasonic would make the battery cells and then Tesla would turn them into battery packs for cars. The 10 million square foot factory would cost 5 billion and Panasonic would finance 2 billion of it. But Panasonic's top leaders were hesitant and they had to never had this type of partnership and Musk, understandably did not strike them as an easy guy to dance with and to produce panasonic Musk and jb came up with a way to handle it and at the site of nevada they set up lights and sent in bulldozers to start preparing for construction then jb invited his counterpart at panasonic to join him on viewing the platform to watch the work the message was clear. Tesla was forging ahead with a factory. Did Panasonic want to be left behind? It worked. Musk and JB were invited to Japan by Panasonic's new young president. It was a come to Jesus session where we had to make him truly commit that we were going to build the insane gigafactory together, JB says. Man, that's crazy, right? Like, here goes a Japanese company, and they're sitting at them, looking at them crazy, like, oh, my gosh. And these guys are out here like, man, we're going to get it done. Shout outs to JB and Elon Musk. <laughs> out there going to China, making the Chinese people be like, oh, what do you got to do, So the dinner was formal, multi-course, an affair at a traditional um, Japanese restaurant and JB was fearful about how Musk would behave 
Elon could be so much held and brimstone and meetings and just unpredictable as all gets out. And he says, but I have also seen him flip a switch and suddenly be this incredibly effective, charismatic, high emotional intelligent businessman. And when he has to do it, and at the Panasonic dinner, the charming must appeared. He sketched out his vision for moving the world to electric vehicles and why two companies should do it together. It was mildly shocked and impressed and because, whoa, this is not like how Elon usually was on other days, says JV. And he's a person who's all over the map and you don't know what he's going to say or do. And then all of a sudden he pulls it all together at the dinner. They agreed to be 40% partners in a gigafactory. And when asked why Panasonic, or Panasonic decided to do the deal, he replied, we were too conservative. <laughs> we are a 95 year old company. We have to change. We have to use some of Elon's thinking. This is the president of Panasonic guys. So don't leave it to me. Don't try to make fun of me when I'm over here talking positive about Elon and you guys are calling me a fanboy and all of these other things. Well, people do that. So it's all good. You know, you are fake news. No problem. But at the end of the day, this is the president. I guess the president's dumb, right? A Panasonic and Toyota and all these other companies that invested money, did partnership deals with Tesla. They're all cornballs. And they saw something that I guess a normie that works at Starbucks or somebody who just watches YouTube think they know more than not only Elon and all these presidents, but even me, and I'm pretty smart. But at the end of the day, this shows that with innovation, you can do anything, right? I mean, bringing a battery factory to the United States of America is amazing. Getting a Japanese com a company to invest billions of dollars, specifically uh, $2 billion of financing, into the factory, it's very interesting. <laughs> Buying a factory that used to be worth one billion for forty-two million, and be distressed and have zero jobs, but bring two thousand jobs in Fremont in California is exciting. All these things are positive, and I don't think that most people hear that. They hear other things that make them want to hate Tesla. When at the end of the day, there's a lot of great things that you guys can hear. The stories that you don't know, that once you kind of hear those stories, you look back and say. Wow, never bet against Elon. That's for sure. So shout outs to everybody. I'll see you on the next episode. I really appreciate the stories of Elon pushing it to the limit. Episode two, we'll get the next one. But hey, shout outs not only to Elon, shout outs to the USA, making America great again, one gigafactory at a time. I'm down with that.